The terminal abutment of this three unit bridge is endodontically involved. Notice the diffuse lesions associated with the apices. It's interesting as a side note to know that about 20% of all sinusitis is odontogenic in origin. One final comment, notice the club shaped MB root. A lot of colleagues would look down into this photographic image into the pulp chamber and say I'm ready to begin cleaning and shaping. But to me the access cavity, although it's a nice start, it's still deficient. By placing hand files into the orifices you can begin to interpret the entry angle of the canals as they enter into the pulp chamber. Here we're brushing with a Gates Glidden 2. Now we're using a Gates Glidden 4. So we can use a series of Gateses 1 through 4 to relocate orifices away from furcal side concavities. The bigger Gateses can be used to marry the orifices to the axial walls. And we can progressively expand the coronal part of the canals to remove restrictive dentin so hand files stand up straight and tall. This is a very, very tight calcific MB2 orifice. By removing some of the restrictive dentin with ultrasonics, you can notice there's more room to accommodate the 10 file. Notice the 10 file is still very tight as you can observe handle flutter. Rather than try to negotiate the full length of the canal, it's important to stop and reevaluate do I have good access? The answer is we could benefit from using a surgical length diamond and taking the entire mesial wall back at the expense of the mesial marginal ridge. This will tend to upright our hand files. Notice the change in the outline pattern from the occlusal view. Well, we can use again X gates or GGs to flare the orifice by removing restrictive dentin we're able to irrigate better, vacuum and irrigate. Notice without much more effort the instruments are probably close to the full working length and the instrument handles are observed to be standing up straight and tall. If you observe the post-operative film again you can see that there's an MB1 and 2 that have been cleaned, shaped and packed. It is interesting that about 93% of all maxillary molars have two systems in the mesial buccal root and about 40% of the 93% it's important to note that the two systems are separate over length and end in two or more separate apical portals of exit. In this occlusal view notice how far mesial the MB2 orifice is. It has historically been said that the MB2 orifice is on an imaginary line from the MB1 to the palatal. You can see in most instances like this one, this is just not the case. Color is another great indicator and road mapping method for finding second systems. Let's review how to find MB2 systems in maxillary molars. It all starts by evaluating multiple horizontally angulated preoperative films. Check out your straight line access. You either have it or you don't. So if you're off axis, that'll dictate the next move on the chessboard. That is removing triangles of dentin. Ultrasonic techniques are very valuable by removing the bulky head of the handpiece to allow us to work precisely doing detailed work. It is usual to alter the outline pattern to accommodate treating the MB2 system. Pre-enlargement techniques allow our small sized hand files to work more easily towards the apical one-third. So by managing the access cavity chamber, like we've talked about, you can begin to find and treat with great confidence MB2s.